Florence Price's music is so unique due to the diversity of her influences. Although she wrote concert music, often based in the European classical tradition, her music is infused with African-American dances and spirituals, exactly what composers like Antonin Dvorak and Frederick Delius suggested as a means for American composers to create a distinctly American style of classical music. Although much of this influence is present in the dance rhythms she frequently incorporates into her music, take the Juba-inspired movements of her symphonies, for example, her concert overture number one is based on an African-American spiritual. This overture is a meditation on the spiritual Sinner Please Don't Let This Harvest Pass, which she used elsewhere in her prolific output. Price does not immediately begin the work with this melody, however. Instead, she writes a 22-measure introduction that just hints at the melody of the spiritual. Finally, she states the full melody in the clarinet and violins. This music is the basis for the rest of the piece, where the theme is stated either in its entirety or in fragments in a series of episodes. Some of these episodes are more energetic and feature a technique that is common in the music of the African diaspora, the call and response. Take the episode immediately following the first statement of the theme. Listen to how this more upbeat version of the melody is first stated in the winds and trumpets before being echoed in the violins. Other times, the theme is fragmented or varied so much that it is hardly recognizable, like in this moment. First, the winds hint at the theme, playing just enough of the melody to sound familiar. Then the strings take over with a fragmented version that immediately starts to modulate. This leads to a brief triumphant fragment of the theme in the clarinet, trumpet, and violins, but it too immediately seems to evaporate in favor of modulation. The episode culminates with a dissonant chord, which is interrupted by a single stroke of the tam-tam that brings the momentum to a stop.
A beautiful brass chorale soon enters, providing some contrast with the spiritual melody, though if you listen closely, you can still hear hints of the spiritual within it. The full orchestra soon joins in the chorale, and as it reaches its final cadence, the trumpets play the first few notes of the spiritual. In other moments, the winds play flowery passages above the more melodic material, suggesting the improvised melismas common in African-American gospel traditions. The fullest version of the call and response technique comes towards the end of the piece, where the melody becomes a round, with the winds and trumpet, and later the strings, playing the theme, and the low brass repeating it a beat later. Trumpet fanfares usher in the concluding measures of the piece, with the brass playing the first few notes of the spiritual once more. <laughs> 